Alright people, Mike Salden here. Uh, welcome to this insanity run of Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition. I'm going to be an infiltrator who also has a talent in assault rifles just in case sniping doesn't go as well as I hope it does. Uh, yeah, we're going to be on insanity, auto level off, classic mode leveling, subtitles, Squad powers, defensive, and we'll put auto save on. Or that could be a bad idea if we get into trouble and I'm dying repeatedly and it's saved in a really awkward area. But it could also help us out if I forgot to save, and then luckily auto save well, will kick in. What about Shepherd? So yeah, this is a Jerry no, Shepherd. I've called this Shepherd. Uh, he's an Earthborn. He was raised on the streets. Uh, he, look out for he raised in the streets. I think I made him ruthless as well. Yeah, he got his unit killed in Torfin. So I, I'm planning to be Paragon, but I just gave him this tragic backstory just for the sake of it. Uh, this is the same uh, character model that I used for my main playthrough. People seem to like it, so I'm just going to reuse that uh, same character model again. Now, I haven't completed Mass Effect 1 uh, on Insanity, uh, probably ever, I don't think. I think the most ever done in the first Mass Effect was Hardcore, so I'm not sure how this is going to go. It could be a disgrace, I could get killed every 5 seconds, I don't know yet. Um, I've completed Mass Effect 2 and 3 on Insanity. Um, I think 2 was harder than 3, uh, that was just the original Mass Effect 2 and 3 though, not in the Legendary Edition, so I don't know if they uh, changed it up to make it easier or harder, or how that's going to uh, go when I get to those games, because I'm planning to do them on Insanity after the original Mass Effect here. At the moment I'm letting these cutscenes play out and we're going to engage with the dialogue and stuff, but if people want me to skip this in the future and just get to me dying, uh, well, hopefully not dying, but I can foresee a lot of disasters in this run, so I'm just uh, getting myself ready for it. But yeah, I'll let the cutscenes play out this time. Um, and yeah, there's my shepherd. Strong chin, strong jawline. <laughs> That's what we like to see. Um, yeah, I'm going to be Paragon mostly, I think. Um, I don't really want to waste any uh, uh, skill points, put that into charm and intimidate, but I kind of really want to keep Rex alive, and my favourite way of doing that is just having a load of charm, and also having got his armour for him in the past, so uh, yeah, I don't want to waste points in charm, but uh, if I have any left over, I'll put it in the charm so we can make sure to keep Rex alive later. Is good. Um, I am an infiltrator, as I said, so I'm going to put a lot of points in the sniper rifles, I think. Because I haven't looked up any really tips or tricks on how to uh, play this on Insanity. But I had heard somewhere that being a sniper is good because you can move miles away from really tough enemies and just you know, headshot them from miles away. And it'll help you out if you're having trouble. But also, things could go wrong if the enemy gets up close and personal to us and I'm sitting there with a sniper rifle. Um, so yeah, it could backfire this plan, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to talk to a few people on the ship here first uh, after this cutscene. Because I think in the first Mass Effect you do get XP from asking questions and talking to characters. Uh, the first Mass Effect really was the most RPG-like in that it did stuff like that. Um, at least I think it did. It gives you like 10 XP for asking uh, questions about different alien races or stuff like that. Uh, anything gives you a new codex entry, I think it counts as giving you 10 XP. And I'm just really going to try to uh, pack up as much extra XP as possible. So I can, uh, yeah, I got 36 XP just from that conversation there alone and two Paragon points. Um, we'll speak to Presley because I think he gives you some uh, points, but first we'll just Infiltrator, increase damage done by tech, um, 
stop your sniper rifle overheating that would be handy I'll put points into that but then yeah sniper rifles is greyed out at the minute we have to put points into pistols to unlock that so uh, mm, uh, I think I'm going to take those points back and put them into pistols so we can get closer to unlocking sniper rifle and we'll put this other point in the tactical armor to increase damage reduction because that's the name of this insanity run is just staying alive we'll talk to Presley here um, Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a we'll see run. if he has uh, any XP happened? to give us from just Sounds asking like him some random questions Sorry, um, just a chat don't really have much of an opinion on uh, Navigator Presley he's kind of a minor character uh, yeah, at first, he's, he kind of doesn't like aliens, he suspects, he's suspicious of them. Uh, so I don't really get on with people like that. Uh, I much prefer the aliens to most of the humans in this game. Uh, so yeah, I'm never, not really, I don't really hate Presley because of that, uh, but I don't really like him either. He's just sort of, he's just sort of a face on the ship, you know, I don't really have much opinion on him. He used to be able to interact with a computer along there somewhere to get XP but I couldn't see the option at the moment so we'll just move on and talk to Corporal Jenkins the absolute beast probably the strongest squad mate you ever get in any of these games people think uh, Garrus in Mass Effect 3 is overpowered but these people have never seen Jenkins properly uh, it's pretty unfair that he's the first squad mate to give you really because uh, he just makes everyone else look terrible in comparison uh, he's pretty much the best character in the series uh, it's a shame they take him out of the game so early, but honestly, the game would be far too easy if they let Jenkins survive the whole way through. So yeah, they had to get rid of him. Because he was making everybody else, including Shepard, look bad in comparison. Because, you know, Shepard's the main character, you can't have this guy Jenkins who's so much better at combat. And just so overpowered next to Shepard, making Shepard look bad. So they just had to get him out of there. Just asking them about the Spectres and all the council races and stuff. I think this will give us some more XP. Um, maybe like 10 XP or something. It's not a lot, but we can use all the XP we can get at the minute. Just to unlock sniper rifles and the uh, skill tree. Um, right, he's telling me about Torfin. Uh, I don't appreciate uh, his uh, tone there, so we're going to tell him we're not a monster. Even though I picked Shepard as being ruthless. Even though I'm going to play him as Paragon for some reason. I'm not sure why I did that now. But uh, just to be different from our play playthroughs, I guess. The captain's waiting for um, We'll just end. Yeah, we got 12 XP. Nice. So we'll just end that conversation. I want to try to get to the gameplay quickly now, but I, I still want the XP. So we'll ask a few questions, but I won't ask everything because I know people they're probably excited or anxious to see me just being shot in the face and getting destroyed by my terrible gameplay skills. Nihilus, he's a pretty cool guy. He sets up the specters of being pretty badass. Uh, just right off the bat, his whole his whole. Uh, this whole tone, this whole energy just gives up the vibes of being a badass specter. It doesn't last too long in the game either, uh, but I think he does a good job here at the start of the game, just introducing the sort of uh, whole idea of specters. The opening of this game really is pretty strong in how it just immediately immerses you into this world. Uh, like we've been playing for about 10 minutes and we've already just had a load of information so quickly uh, injected into this and uh, it's not really, it doesn't really bore you, it doesn't take ages to tell you everything, um, it just uh, hits you with the basics and the rest of the detail is in the codex if you want it or you can ask as many questions as you want to get the lore uh, and have the world explained to you. Or you can, uh, you know, just uh, skip on through the dialogue and get straight into the action. But again, I'm trying to uh, pick up some XP here. So yeah, we're just talking about Eden Prime. It's a human colony. We're going there to get this Prothean beacon. 
Obviously, this goes beyond me. And it's really just a test for Shepard from the council, council space. to see if he's up for being a human specter. Nihilus is really here to I'm evaluate him. But uh, things are not going to go all that well. Isn't just here for the I'm sure everybody's played this a million times. It's watching this, so they don't really care about spoilers. Otherwise, I don't know why watching some edit try to do an insanity run and talk all over the cutscenes uh, is why you've chosen to be your first experience of Mass Effect. Hopefully, there's no one here like that. I'm pretty sure everyone will have. Well, well, they won't be worried about spoilers on this. I was impressed when I studied the reports from Torfin. Yeah, they're uh, uh, yeah, they don't like what I did on Torfin <laughs> because I I picked the ruthless background. I don't know why. I just I never really pick ruthless. I pick Soul Survivor or uh, what's the other one? War Hero. Um, so I just picked ruthless to be different this time, even though I'm going to be Paragon. Ruthless is kind of an option you would pick for if you're going to be a renegade shepherd. Um, let's see, any more questions? We'll ask him about just the Protheans again. Do you think that'll give us another codex entry and get us 12 XP or 10 XP or something? Yeah, the Prothean ruins that they found on Mars, that's really how humanity got kick-started into the galaxy. Um, Wrong hands. Just wants to see, uh, yeah, anybody from the Traverse could come in here. A lot of raiders, they could take this beacon or whatever, so we better uh, get to it and stop them before that happens. We'll ask him about the Terminus systems, because I think that'll give us another uh, codex entry, and then give us another 10 XP. Some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing mm. the council wants is to get dragged into a major yeah, conflict. Cause a major conflict. So we'll keep this uh, shadow control. operation. Think of ask them. Did I ask them like about Eden no Prime Eden itself? Before we touch down. It's a peaceful farm. I'm not sure if that'll give us a codex entry. I'm not even sure if getting a codex entry is what counts as giving you 12 XP or not. But we'll just ask them in case. And again, in future episodes, if people want me to just skip the dialogue and get into the uh, actual gameplay, I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, Eden Prime's one of our first uh, colonies out here. Just what they told us in school. What else do you know with Protheans? Yeah, Anderson just explained what he learned in high school. <laughs> The Protheans are a pretty cool idea. I really like how they're built up throughout the series to be really mysterious. And everything Liara thinks about them. She builds them up in her head to be this amazing race of people. And then when you actually meet Javik, he's sort of just this warmongering sort of imperialist madman <laughs> and sort of shatters everything that people thought about the Protheans. I thought that was a pretty good twist. And it's really funny how Liara reacts to uh, what Protheans were actually like. Though I suppose Javik isn't a really fair uh, sort of example because he's a soldier who was born into the middle of a war. He really never had a chance to be a normal Prothean, whatever that would have been. Uh, so yeah, he's just a warrior. All he knows is war and the Prothean Empire and... You do still get a sense that the Protheans weren't a very uh, weren't a very peaceful or uh, peace-loving people. They were pretty interested in expansion, imperialism, going to a planet, making everyone there join their empire. And if you don't join it, well, that's probably the end of you. <laughs> yeah. So there we have our first introduction to Sovereign. Status the aboard. Reaper ship. 17 uh, minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Well, what was Sovereign doing here again? I think he was left behind in the Milky Way after the last invasion of the Reapers. Just to sort of keep an eye on things, make sure that uh, everything's on track for the next invasion. But this time, something went wrong when he sent out the signal for the Citadel to uh, you know, bring in the rest of the Reapers. Because the Protheans managed to uh, 
they managed to set up the citadel so it'll no longer spawn. So now Sovereign's like, what, what's going on here, lads? I really need to start this invasion. I'm really way behind schedule. So he's gone out, he's got Saren, he started to indoctrinate him. And he's getting him to set things up so the Reaper invasion can take place as scheduled. What about survivors, Captain? Alright, here we have Caden and Jenkins, absolute legend. Uh, I actually think if Jenkins survived, I'd probably use him more than Caden. Because there's something about Jenkins. Uh, I don't know, I, I sort of like the cut of his jib. I'd like to have him around more than Caden or Ashley, probably. He, 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 just, he just makes me laugh, Jenkins. But again... We are approaching drop point two. They decided that he was too overpowered and that he absolutely cannot be in your party because he just makes Shepard and everyone else look bad by comparison. Right, we've got 24 XP from all that talking, I think. Um, we want to get out our snipe rifle here, the Avenger 1. Um, I don't really use a sniper in any of these games, so there could be a lot of failures here to start off until I get used to sniping. I normally just go with assault rifles and biotic powers. Um, oh, here they come. Jenkins, use Caden as a human shield. No. Uh, no, Jenkins. What a legend, what a heroic death. He took those bullets like a champ. Okay. Nice. And where's oh, oh kidding, you stole my kill. I hope I still got XP for that. Um, let's see what we can can we unlock sniper rifles yet? We've put another two points in here. Um should I just unlock it now or should I put up armor a bit? Um infiltrator Should I put points I'll put a point in the infiltrator. And I don't really want to put up charm yet because I sort of think it's more important to put up our armor or something. Because it's all about staying alive. We sort of want to have as few deaths as possible. Caden, we'll just auto level you, Caden, because I'm probably never going to use you after this mission anyway. And there he is Jenkins, RIP, the absolute legend. It should have been you, Caden. It should have been you. Sometimes Marines die. The rest of us just we'll just sort of be straightforward on. with us. He was a soldier. He knew what he was getting into. Aye, aye, and it's time to get on with the mission. I don't actually hate Caden or Ashley that much, to be honest. They're just kind of there in the background and they never really interest you as much as uh, Garrus or Rex or any of the alien crew members. They do get a bit of a hard time from people. But... Uh, yeah, they're not that interesting, so I can understand why people don't really like them that much. And I just wasted a grenade. Genius. See, the problem with this is I've been playing Mass Effect uh, 2 and 3 a lot, and I keep hitting square to uh, reload the weapons, even though in Mass Effect 1 you, you don't have thermal clips, you have the overheating system. Um, so I'm doing pretty well sniping at the minute. I've not really taken much damage. These are really scrub enemies, they're not going to uh, do much to me. And here we have Ashley. I actually really like her armor here, the first set of armor she has on. It's kind of basic, but it, it looks cool. It looks better than what Caden has on, it makes her stand out a bit. Um, but once you get to her personality, and she's a bit of a, you know, she's a bit like Presley, doesn't like aliens insults the rest of your alien crew um, you sort of go off her immediately when that happens because as soon as you get Rex and Garrus you're like these guys are badass and come on headshot come on you there we go nice and headshot this guy there we go 28 XP nice doesn't really take much damage again that's good we'll just talk to Ashley um, in charge here, sir? We'll Give just be what happened to... here. Oh, I don't know if we can get any XP out of her by asking her many questions. Try to get off and I kind of want to just keep getting on with the gameplay here, but um, 
You know, we'll just ask. Any idea what kind of enemy we're facing? What kind of enemy we're facing? Death. Yep, the Geth. The Geth haven't been seen outside the veil in nearly 200 years. I think we'll get a codex entry for the Geth now. That should give us some XP. They must have come for the beacon. Um, the dig site is don't know if there's any much the else we can ask. We might still um, be there. We can yeah, just tell her to join us. We'll be I nice to her at the start. Um, we'll ask about Geth again. What else do you know about the Geth? Just in this case uh, this gives, gives us more school. XP. Because I really want to level up um, as much as possible early on. So I've got some good uh, skill points into my armor and unlock sniper rifle uh, in the skill tree. Well, after that, they just kind of um, disappeared behind the It's just a quick history of the Geth. Nobody's Again, it's really amazing how much the intro to this game packs what in there with all these the different attack. races and we lore and history. The um, like, you just... Like and it's just really done in a really, like, casual way. Um, what happened to the researchers at the dig site? Yeah, let's just get to the dig site. Know. They set up camp near the beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their unit fared better I don't than think mine. there's anything else I want to ask her about. We'll just move on. Let's get back to sniping. That got us 12 XP. Nice. Uh, we'll steal whatever's in this crate. Scorpion armor. That's no good to me. But I think Caden can wear it or something. And we got some new ammo. The thing about the, uh, the loot in this game is you kind of get far, far too much of it. Like you unlock stuff and then like you take five steps and there's a new crate with new stuff in it that's already better than the stuff you got five seconds ago. So you're constantly just changing out the loot. Um, oh, I can wear scorpion armor. Nice, we'll put that on. I thought I wasn't going to be able to wear that for some reason. Actually, we'll just auto level you as well. Because it doesn't really matter much. I'm not going to use you that much, I don't think. And we'll just run in here, and it's going to teach us how to take cover. Yep, we'll just do that. Um, where's the Geth? I know there's two or three of them down there somewhere. I want to stick to my uh, sniping them. Can we get a wee headshot? Nice. Headshot, headshot. Oh, oh I missed. Where is that? Is that guy just going to hide behind cover now? Hmm, the AI is smarter than I remember. Maybe it's a legendary. Oh no, they're running in. Here they are. Come on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Nice headshot. Is this our guy just going to take cover? See, I remember in the original Mass Effect, these guys would just sort of run towards you. Maybe they improved. I'm trying to get him in the shoulder. There we go. Uh, can we get a headshot on this guy? There we go. Leveled up again. We're not really taking too much damage yet, so this isn't too bad so far. We'll put these in the charm because there's a conversation coming up with a guy where if you have enough charm you can get an extra pistol off him and what's the other thing? You can get grenades out of them if you have the charm option. And because things aren't too hard at the minute, I'm just going to put up charm. Because again, later on, I do want to have high charm so I can keep uh, Rex alive. The beacon was right here. It must yeah, this is just the dig site. We'll investigate it. Ho guess. Hopefully, we'll get more XP for Maybe asking we'll about this stuff. Any survivors? Got out of here alive? If they were lucky. Uh, Maybe probably right hiding at the mining camp. It's yeah. Because there's a group of people you can find in a shot. Oh, we got no XP. Oh well. What's in this crate? Hurricane Banshee. I do want to have a good assault rifle at points as well, just in case sniping uh, isn't always an option and we need to whip out an assault rifle. Like this section right here, these uh, husks, they're going to get up pretty close to us. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to snipe them in time, might have to throw a few grenades into them. Or whip out the assault rifle. Um, we'll see how this goes. Where is he? Where is he? Let's... Oh, nope. Nope. Uh, okay, he's a bit too fast. Right, the shield's down. Uh, oh, Ashley and Caden actually did something. They slowed him down. Nice. Um, can we get a headshot? These guys are stronger than the Geth somehow. <laughs> Why is this possible? Oh, there, the grenade took him out. Nice. And, yeah. They actually put him down, or was it my grenade? Okay, can... No, there's no people in there. There's, uh, one of these little, uh... Oh, what's this? Upgrade kit. 
Yeah, armor and an assault rifle will take that. There's people in one of those huts over there. We'll go to them in a minute. Um, no, we can't wear the assassin. Ashley can have the assassin armor. Yeah, even though I think our original armor looks better or stands out more. Um, what's in here? Yeah, we got another banshee, some more assassin armor. Um, like the Reaper is not better than the Avenger one, or it is, but hmm, I like the accuracy rating of mine better, so we'll hang on to it. And then there's people hiding over here, isn't there? We'll open this, speak to them, get some more XP for opening this door with the easiest money game ever. Just <laughs> press the buttons it shows you. Humans. Thank the maker. Uh, okay, this guy's kind of crazy. Sometimes I just punch him in the face when I feel like it. But today we're going to try to be Paragon. We're just going to let him ramble his nonsense. We'll ask them a few questions, I think, to see if there's any XP we can get out of them. Manuel and Dr. Warren, yeah, that's your name. Uh, I don't think there's much we can ask them. But again, I'm just trying to get as much XP squeezed out of these people as possible. Uh, ask what's wrong with the assistant. He's a bit unstable. Again, sometimes I like to just punch him in the face because he's annoying me. But today we'll, we'll let him ramble out his nonsense. Uh, no, no hope, no escape. I'm not mad. I'm the only seeing one left. Oh, of course you are, Manuel. Okay, we'll just leave them here. They didn't really have much we could ask them about lore-wise that would give us a new codex entry. Because again, I'm going with the theory that anything that gets you a codex entry also gets you 12 XP. That could be wrong. I need to look that up. We got two Paragon points from doing that anyway. That's pretty good. So it was worth chatting to them. Uh, what is this? Oh yeah, this is Nihilus. And he's meeting his best friend, Saren. I'm sure this will go well, and nothing uh, terrible will happen at all. Saren? Saren's a pretty cool villain, I think. Because his plan isn't really just to take over the world. He thinks he's very much thinks he's doing the right thing with uh, trying to placate uh, Sovereign. He thinks he's going to be able to negotiate some sort of deal for uh, anyone who decides to wor work with Sovereign. Um, but yeah, it's not going to go as he planned. And goodbye, Nihilus. R.I.P. Nihilus. R.I.P. Jenkins. Now that is a great shot there. I mean that looks lovely there in the Legendary Edition. Some people really hate the lens flare. It is kind of overdone. We'll just fire a shot at Sovereign just for the sake of it. Um, but yeah I think some of the lighting up upgrades they are pretty nice. I mean I think this section in particular looks great. Um, oh, we'll get a grenade on the husks. There we go. It's kind of hard to time blowing up the grenades, but I found looking down the sights of your uh, rifle, you can see the grenades closer to the enemy, and you can sort of time it that way. But the grenade system in this game isn't great. You can't, there's a lot of guesswork involved in the timing of blowing it up, because you can't really see. Did that? Is that grenade close enough to the enemy? I don't know. It kind of looks like it. Okay, we'll just hit it, and then it blows up a mile behind them. Um, there's people hiding in here. We put up our charm for this conversation because we want to uh, get the uh, extra pistol out of this guy and we want Everybody him to confess that there's a there. smuggling ring Coming out. We're not uh, so then we can get some grenades out of, uh, You're okay now. out of his buddy hurt. Cole, I think this his name is. Or no, he's Cole. Sure. And the other guy is the uh, smuggler. I can't remember his name. But yeah, we'll just uh, let them ramble on here, and then I think there's an option to make them confess about the smoking ring. Uh, any details? We'll get some attack details, maybe that'll give us some XP. Uh, I'm not sure if it will, but we'll see. Again, we haven't died yet, so it's going pretty well. Maybe I'm worrying a bit too much about gathering XP. 
But I have a feeling that later on they're going to ramp up the difficulty and I'm going to be dying a lot more. So, yeah, they're going to confess now about the stuff they're holding back. Uh, you should come clean. Give me the guns, cool. Well, I think it's a pistol you get out of him. Or maybe grenades. Or maybe the other guy has the grenades. I'm not sure which. Yeah, it's, I found a pistol. Okay, I'll take that off your hands and um, we'll give him this charm option because he can give us some other items, I think. So that's why it's good to actually have a little bit of charm early on just for these little uh, conversations. So yeah, just give us all your stuff. Thanks a lot. Um, and who's your contact so we can bully some more stuff out of him? And yeah, we need the other charm uh, option. We need his name. Yeah, he might have something to do with this attack. I very much doubt it. Powell, that's his name. Yeah, we'll go over and interrogate him after this. Alright, thanks for your stuff. Uh, we'll just break into your wee shack here and uh, we'll just steal what electronics. Why is it greyed out? I should have enough electronics for this easy. Oh, there it is. I don't know why that was greyed out to start, but here we have, we've got it now. And we'll take that as well. And um, we got 12 XP, nice. So we just, we got him to hand over his stuff, and then we went in and robbed the rest of his stuff. Um, Stinger, and we'll put on a, we'll put a Banshee, and do not want to swap to the Reaper yet? Um, no, we'll leave with the, I'm doing well with the Avenger, it's got pretty good accuracy so far. The, uh, the Reaper does more damage, but... Okay, we have to investigate Nihilus. He's having a bad day. Aturian? You know him? So his uh, observation of Shepard has not gone well. He's not going to be able to report in. And here we have Paul. Right. All we really want from him is to get these grenades or whatever the... Whatever he was uh, hiding. Was hiding from those creatures. We'll, we'll bully him a little help? just to make him feel so bad for hiding right there when he could have. He could have probably saved Nihilus if he just shouted, Hey, uh, look out, there's an or uh, That guy's got a gun. Do something. Uh, but yeah, he just decided to hide back there. He probably wouldn't have been much good in the firefight. He's just some dock worker. But he could have helped Nihilus out, give him a quick warning when he turned his back there. Um, so what do you know about this beacon? Where'd Saren go after he killed Nihilus? He jumped on the cargo train. Yeah, Saren went over to the cargo train. Going He's going over to plant the bombs or whatever to destroy this place. So uh, we'll have to uh, stop that. Just that damn mothership showed up in the attack. They killed everyone. Killed everyone. If I'd been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. Cool mentioned you. Yep. Here on the dock. So uh, what the what do you have for us, mate? Can we get some grenades or a pistol what? or what do you give no. us? I mean, um, what no, we do now? care. We want the stuff you're I'm hiding. My supervisor's Your supervisor's dead. dead. Oh, too bad. Anyway, uh, what weapons do you have, mate? Anything hidden nearby that we could use against the Geth? A shipment of grenades came through. Shipment of grenades. Yeah, I thought Nobody it was grenades. I don't really, I don't really even use weapons. grenades that much, but I just you want them. Son of a bitch. We're out here trying to protect your sorry ass. Yeah, and actually all you going off on. You can rip us off? I never thought you'd actually need those grenades. So, we and we'll just bully him a little and make him feel bad. How was I supposed to know? Just Hand over your grenades. grenades. They're yours. Take them. My smuggling days are over. I swear. And yeah, we'll just do this charm uh, check. Those grenades could have come in handy. If I were you, I think of something. Okay, so that'll put our power gun up because again, we want high power gun because we want to keep Rex alive. And the way I like to do it is just being uh, having enough power gun points. I don't really play Renegade that much in the first game. It makes more sense in Mass Effect 2 because you know you sort of go to uh, Cerberus. You're a bit of a rogue agent in that uh, game, and a lot of the Renegade choices in Mass Effect 2 just make more sense. Like the one where you uh, stick the guy in the back who's uh, repairing the uh, fighter. How come you're the only one who survived? 
Because you obviously don't want them to have a strong, stronger chance against you, so you just tell them he's working too hard and electrifying. There's a lot of renegade choices in that in the second game, which just they make a lot more sense. So I do be a bit more renegade in Mass Effect 2. But Mass Effect 1, I mainly like to be Paragon. So yeah, we're just bullying this guy for going to have a sleep behind the crates. You survived because we'll just tell him he makes us sick. You ditch Even though I th I think he's he probably couldn't have done anything. He, he would have just ran out and got shot. But again, he could have just shouted to uh, Nihilus, "Hey, look out! Uh, Saren's got a gun on you there, mate. Maybe do something." So we'll just leave him there. I don't think he's got anything else useful to tell us about. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. And we'll get into these fighting some more Geth. I think this next bit's going to be the trickiest bit because I think the Geth numbers, high explosives, yep, nice. Um, we got five of them. Okay. I think this is the hardest bit because there's a lot more Geth on the way to this train, and they're getting a lot closer. We'll put a grenade out. Did that? No, that completely missed. And he moved over there. Nice. So that's what I'm saying about the grenades, you can't really, they're hard to sort of time the use of them. It's one of the weirdest designed grenade uh, types in any game I've ever seen. How they operate, uh, just. So this is actually a good point to have the sniper rifle, because all these geth, they're just really lined up away down here. Get that, ew, what a shot. Okay, this destroyer, he's coming in. No, he, no, he stopped, right? Oh, no, he's coming. Uh, okay, headshot. Oh, he's still coming. Oh, no, it's a rocket. Oh, no, death destroyer. Um, oh, we're almost dead. Okay, this has gone badly. Ashley, Caden, please do something. Oh, did, did they get him? Okay, we're just going to hide over here. Uh, oh, Ashley and Caden actually did something useful. Amazing. I mean, I'm pretty sure I took down most of his health, but they actually did save me there. That's pretty impressive. Newfound respect for Ashley and Caden. We'll just heal ourselves quickly because that's the most damage we've taken. I did think the game was going to get harder eventually because it was going too well there. Still, we've got zero deaths. We're doing well so far. Um, what are you shooting at? Is there one left? I really... Ah, uh, uh, there, it's on the radar now. The there's two down there, I think. We'll just uh, make our way slowly over there. There, yeah, he popped up his head. Oh, what a headshot. Come on. Come on. Show me your face. Get a grenade on him. Nice, that scared him out of cover, and we got the headshot. So, that was actually a pretty good use of the grenade. Um, we'll put up pistols, we'll unlock the sniper rifle tree at last. Uh, but we'll put a point at the tactical armor because we were taking a lot of damage there um, for the first time, really. Almost died. But I can't believe it. Ashley and Caden actually saved me from that Geth destroyer. So, yeah, your party is actually useful in this game, it seems. Um, I sort of had to run away to heal, <laughs> and they, they just took down the destroyer. Um, again, I did take down most of his health first, so... Okay, Except Sarah, what are you doing? Yeah, you're planting bombs, you want to destroy all the evidence that you were here? here. Well, we're going to have to put a stop to that. I don't really know why he doesn't just like blow up the beacon immediately after he uses it here. I know he's leaving the Geth to plant bombs. But you would think he'd just pull out his pistol or some grenades and just like, destroy the beacon so that he knows it's destroyed and no one else is going to use it. Um, I guess he's overconfident. He probably thought Nihilus was the only person here to investigate this or something. And that's why he's just leaving the Geth to do the job for him. I'm not sure if that's correct. That's just my guess. So we'll disarm the bomb. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted. There's nobody shooting Hurry, at us yet, so this is going to be a pretty down. simple one to disarm. And we'll go up here. Can we snipe anybody from... Uh, oh, there they are. Okay, can we get a nice little shot off here? By, oh. What? That was a headshot. Oh. Hit their wee buyer. 
think we can overload those later, can't we? Have to wait for the rifle to cool down. What is with this guy? There we go. Guess because he's so far away, it takes longer to put him down. Ah, uh, they started using buyer. Oh yeah, Caden or something took that guy down. Nice. Ah, uh, buyers are so annoying. Right, we'll get in a bit closer because it's actually taking longer than I thought to snipe those people from back there. Oh, come on, there we go. There's a rocket uh, or, or a destroyer Geth over there because he's firing rockets. But we'll just disarm this bomb while there's no one near us. Just in case a destroyer runs over here because when they run up to you they, they can be pretty dead. Ooh, where'd that guy come from? Get out of the way. There we go. We'll just use Caden as a human shield. Um, they just seem to be shooting at the wall at the minute. We'll send Caden forward, or Ashley forward there. Just so they can draw out this Geth and I can snipe them. Oh, here's a bomb. We'll get rid of that first, actually. Uh, okay. Where is this last Geth? What are you shooting at, Ashley? Grenade! Oh, sniper! Yes! That was a well timed grenade. Can we get another one on this guy? Boom! That did. Yeah, that got. Nice! See, grenades can be useful, you just sort of have to aim uh, carefully with them and not be too far away, or else you'll never be able to see where the grenade went. But yeah, grenades do have their uses. Open this crate, steal everything in there. I'll go through the equipment when we're back in the Normandy because I kind of want to just finish up this mission. Uh, headshot, oh, headshot, there we go. So far being a sniper is working pretty well. I'm enjoying it. Uh, uh, except when there's husks because for some reason I can't snipe husks that well at all. There's, they seem to be more powerful than the Geth. We haven't used any powers yet. We'll use throw on this guy. Yeah, you sent him back. Caden can crowd control that guy with throw while I take out this Geth. Oh, come on. There we go. And we'll just, before going to the beacon, we'll go over here and get this stuff out of this locker. Some people miss that you can uh, actually get this stuff. Uh, makes sense because everyone, they're just, there's the objective over there. Um, we got a Reaper too. Nice. We'll equip that because that's 91 damage. And we'll put on anti personnel rounds. Because when we go to the Citadel, we'll be fighting humans. Um, yeah, as I was saying, most people they just go straight to the uh, straight to the beacon. They don't realize there's like stuff over here to loot. So it's not it's just nice to be rewarded for exploring a bit here. There's also a hidden cutscene that not a lot of people see because again, they're just like, "There's the beacon. Let's get the beacon," and they don't realize that you can come over here. Uh, loot this crate and then head over here and then you get a nice little oh extra cutscene like uh, showing off where Sovereign had landed and how he destroyed the areas. It's not a huge uh, secret or anything but you know it's a nice little detail. I only found that a few years ago because most people they just run up to the beacon get this main cutscene and they didn't realize you could head over there. So the way this plays out, I think Ashley, because Normandy. because I'm Bro Shepherd, Ashley is going to be the one to charge in and uh, get uh, nearly get fried by the beacon. But if you're Fem Shep, uh, I think Caden runs in. It, they really want you to have a romance with one of these two characters. It sort of it sort of really pushes you in that direction with how you're heroically going to save Ashley here. And she's automatically gonna, you know, be pretty fond of Shepard for doing this. Um, I think I am actually gonna 
romance, actually. For once, I normally just either romance Liara or I romance nobody in Mass Effect 1. But I have a plan to make something amusing happen in Mass Effect 3. Um, so I'm going to romance Ashley in the first game. And I'm going to romance Jack in the second game. And hopefully when Ashley and Jack meet in Mass Effect 3, um, there's going to be some sort of uh, argument or something funny might happen. I don't think they, they only meet at the party. I think the Citadel DLC party, so maybe maybe they won't have much interaction. But yeah, I was planning to do that to see what would happen. So yes, yeah, Serge getting the bad news that Shepard actually got to the beacon. He is pretty pissed right now. And this is our first introduction to matriarch. Eh, can't even say that word right. Matriarch. Benezia, uh, Liara's mother. Um, I sort of think Matriarch Benezia is kind of an underused character in this game. We see her in this cutscene, really, and then we don't see her again until Novaria. I think we needed another mission in there where you see her somewhere else and you get to know her a bit more before you just fight her Doctor, on Novaria. To flesh out her character a bit more. But uh, she is pretty cool. Just I don't think she's used as well as Saren. In terms of villains. So yeah, Shepard's waking up. He's not really feeling that well. His head's pretty much been fried by the beacon. I'm probably going to let this cutscene play out. And then when we regain control. I'm probably going to end this episode there for today. Um, we're going to be nice to Ashley I think. Because we're going to, we're going to romance her. Um, just to be different. Because not a lot of people romance Ashley. Because well she and Caden. They're not really the main options people want. Uh, yeah she took that well. She had a little reaction to Shepard being nice there, so we're already sort of locking in this romance. Romance in Mass Effect 1, it wasn't handled all that well in my opinion, because they sort of just force you into one <laughs> really quickly. And you, sometimes you don't really notice you're being uh, pushed into it. Uh, like I know people, they spoke to Ashley once. Um, they were just they were they weren't trying to hit on her, they were just being nice to her. And then they didn't speak to her again. But at the end of the game suddenly Ashley shows up and yeah, it's time to uh, bang okay and their romance and Ashley for some reason. <laughs> and the game sort of locks you into it if you're nice to either her or Caden. Uh, if you don't shut them down immediately. Yeah, we feel bad about Jenkins. What a legend, never forgotten. You did a good job, Jeff. If only all soldiers were as powerful as Jenkins. Um, is there anything else we want to ask? Um, Chief Williams is ask about Ashley. I'm not sure if any of these questions will give us a codex entry. She's been reassigned to the but we'll just try it out. We can still get as much XP as possible. By the way, in the next episode, I'll probably be at the Citadel doing a lot of side missions. Do people want to watch the side missions or do they want to just have me do all the Citadel stuff in the background and then come back and have it be the first mission we're doing? Um, maybe Pharos or something? Let me know if you want to see me doing the side stuff or you just want the main missions. Because there is a lot of there is a lot of side stuff on the Citadel, so I uh, don't want to. I don't know if people would get sick of seeing too much of that, or if they just uh, if they want me to skip to the main missions. Again, uh, also let me know if you want me to like in future skip through this dialogue, because I am talking through most of it anyway. Um, or if you want me to like just uh, play it normally. Why? And do do all the dialogue and cutscenes or whatever. Just I um, haven't really done much commentary videos in a long time, so I don't really know what people want with this stuff anymore. Um, but we're, we're trying this out. We'll see how it goes. If people enjoyed this rambling nonsense, 
Um, Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Yeah. Just before I lost consciousness, I had some. We're just telling Anderson about our vision. A vision. A vision of what? It was a vision of war. I saw synthetics. Get me. Slaughtering people. So yeah, that's just the Prothean's warning to everybody, but we don't really understand we it just yet. What are we gonna tell him? Okay. We don't know what information Anderson again. I don't think I spoke about him, but he's a really cool character, Keith David. You just immediately you you just know this guy's on your side, and you warm to him immediately. Uh, like, unlike someone like uh, you, Dina, who when you run into him, you just immediately hate him. Anderson, you're just like, yeah, this is a cool guy. This guy's on my side. We can trust this guy. I'll find some way to take him down. Yeah, we're gonna find a way to take Sarah down. All right. Do almost anything. And I think that's the end of this conversation. We'll expose him. Saren's gone rogue, and the council. All right. So I think we're gonna leave this video here. And see if he can um, and I'll see you again uh, next time with part two. It's probably going to be mostly on the Citadel. But let me know if you want to see those side missions or not. Alright people, see you later.